Hello and welcome to another web development tutorial on this channel in which I want to introduce to you the web components standard and how you can use it to make your custom web libraries more usable. So if you remember a few weeks ago I showed you my Mebright gallery which I made testable via Puppeteer. Those videos were focusing on unit testing of this library. So here it is how it currently looks. So you have full featured image library with full screen. In this video, I also showed you the test pages, so how it can be integrated into an HTML page. And currently it involves setting up some custom divs with custom IDs and then calling several functions of the gallery and providing those IDs as custom selectors. And then the gallery takes over and does all the magic of setting up the images, scaling them, loading them, everything that's required. Let's quickly look at how the code looks and what we can achieve with web components. So you directly see the benefits. So here on the the left side you see the old code. So we have here a style defining some IDs for special containers. Those are the containers used by the gallery. And down here is the HTML markup. So we have a diff of the ID container and here we have all the images. So let's just close it. Next we have a thumb container again using this ID. We could also use a class but since we just have one gallery it's okay here to use the ID. And again we have several images as children. And down here we have an H2 title. So this is how the markup looks. And then down here we have a script module. Currently here this is a development server We're directly importing the ts file usually you would import the compiled javascript what we then do is we set up the gallery so we first create a gallery we get access to the image viewer show the image and then we query a selector so this is typical for using the gallery now let's look here on the right side again we have some stars but you see here we no longer use the ids we use some custom elements here. So mbg minus, well, this stands for me bright gallery, it's just some custom prefix and then minus and different elements. And down here we use those. So here we have the mbg gallery which is kind of a container which includes a slideshow with the images. So this is similar to what we had here, this container. Then we have the mbg thumbs again with images. It's the same we had here with the thumb container. And down here we have the title. So the markup looks already a lot easier to read because we didn't just use this with special IDs. No, we're using here custom HTML elements. And also if we look down here at the script, it's just a simple import. So no need to create a gallery and then set up here this logic for changing images and updating the title. And yeah, now I want to show you how you can achieve this by using web components. First, let's have a quick look what web components are. It's a standard which has been around for a couple of years already and it's well supported by now by all the big browsers. You can safely use it. Here's a link to some of the concepts, what's included. So there is a lot included, a lot of options which I won't show in this video. This video is just introducing the bare bones, what a custom component is and how you can quickly use it. But it has a lot of features including for example a shadow DOM which you can use to isolate the content of your component from the rest of your DOM. So for example if you use custom styles those would not affect the global DOM and vice versa from our side you wouldn't be able to make calls to elements that are children of your custom component. This is a nice feature which you can use for more complex libraries but in my use case here this is not required. I basically want to allow for example styling of the content of my gallery from the outside. But here you can just browse through all that's available and down here you also see which browsers support the different options here. For example here we have the shadow root which is well supported. There's also a home page called called webcomponents.org where you see the support for us here, this custom elements, this is what's important. And you can click on the different version CNC from when it's supported. So it dates quite a while back and for the other browsers it's similar. So with this standard, what you can do now, as I just showed you, you can create your own custom components. Important thing is you usually name them with some prefix and then a minus. This way it's clear that they are different to the built-in components. For example diff, image and all that stuff. And it's important that you register those. For this you typically include a script in your home page where you want to use those components. And the registration is pretty simple. Also the creation. So here's the code in my 
index.ts. So before what I did, I just imported and exported those different functions. Those are the functions which I called directly from the markup of, for example, here, the gallery HTML. So if you look here at the bottom, we have this create gallery. This is basically what I export down here via this create gallery element. And then we have a few others. But instead of just exporting those, so I still want to remain backward compatible. So I still export those. A user of my gallery who doesn't want to use web components because as I said, although they are supported for a long time now, there might be reasons he or she wants to rather play it safe and directly initialize the gallery. So that's why I still export those. But down here, I declare several custom elements. And this is how it's done. Create a class, give it a name, and you extend HTML element. So if you've already written JavaScript libraries where you manipulated the DOM, you're familiar with HTML element. And here we're just extending it. So we're making our own HTML element. And then down here, that's the important thing. You have to register it. And here you have this custom elements, which has a defined function and the first parameter is the string providing the name of your custom component. And the second parameter is the class from which it will be constructed. And here, as I said, with a minus, we mark this as custom components. And I have several ones. And you see here, those three here are just empty components. I just define them so I can use them. I don't even need to add additional functionality for now. But up here, the Mebrite gallery element. So if you remember, I have here this wrapping element around the others. This one has functionality and I just have a single function here. So there are different lifecycle methods which you can implement if you create your own custom component. One of the most important ones is the connected callback. This one is called once the custom component is added to the DOM and in it I can now make all the setup which I previously had in this onload function event handler here. So now I don't have to do this here. I can directly do it here in the connected callback. And what I want to do is, first of all, I want to have access to some attributes. Attributes are passed in to the component like this. So it's a name and then a string. It's similar to image where you supply a source, a title. And here for your custom components, you can have custom attributes. If I don't provide them, you can see this here, they can be null. So you typically want to check if they have been provided. If not, you need to supply some default value. Down here, I create the gallery and this call is similar to the first one, but here I directly use the custom elements in my selectors. So the slideshow will be a direct descendant of my MBG gallery. And then I also want to have a selector for the images contained in that. This is still similar to the code I had before. And here we have the MBG thumbs and the MBG thumbs image. This is a way to get access to the elements that this create gallery call requires. Down here, as I said, I first check if this attribute was provided. And if it is, here with this plus, this is like casting this string to a number. Otherwise, I pass an undefined because undefined is then handled internally by my gallery and default values are supplied. Down here, title element, I also want to get access to it. And if it exists, then I want to get the image info for the current image and I want to set the inHTML for the title. And down here, I also define a callback for whenever the image changes to update the title. So this is now cleanly separated from the markup because I don't need to worry if I'm a user of my gallery now. I just set up here gallery in this modular way. So I provide container. I say I want a slideshow, some thumbs and a title. And internally, I can make every part of those optional. So I could just say as a user, I don't want a title. So I just leave it out. I don't want thumbs. So I just leave it out. This way, this is very flexible and also it's very clean. Now with those selectors, there's one question which remains open. What if there are two galleries on the page? Then this selector will not be unique anymore. And you also don't have a way from the outside to provide uniqueness. So what we could do here in this connect callback, we could attach to our element. So this here, this pointer is the actual HTML element. So we could add a class to the class list. And yeah, this class here we could do, we say, okay, we have a static variable, which we call class counter. We set it to zero initially. And then here, let's use template literals. We want to use the class counter, increment it. 
after usage. And since it's a static element, I need to access it like this. And let's just call this mbg custom gallery and have the counter. So every time a gallery element is created, we would have a unique class now. And we could do it even a little different. Let's save this in a variable custom class. And now we add this custom class. And now with this custom class added to our container, what this allows us to do, we can change those queries here, those selectors by using template literals. And instead of the mbg minus gallery, we use our custom selector. So we need a dot because it's a class, and then we can insert our custom class and we can do this for the other selectors too. So it still works, but if we inspect now here our container, this one, the mbg gallery, we see here there's a custom class and it's with a minus zero at the end. So if we were to use a second mbg gallery with other images just beneath it or somewhere else on the page, it would have another custom class because we're using a static variable to increase the counter whenever such a gallery is attached. We can also quickly check this. Let's go back to our code here and I will just copy this whole code and maybe remove some images. So the last three images, I just remove those. And also up here in the slideshow. And we'll leave the rest as it is. Now let's restart our server, go back to the page. And now you see here are two galleries. This one here has just five images. The other one has still the eight images. And yeah, if I click here, only those change. And if I click down here, only those change. And let's again see now here, you see custom minus gallery zero, and here we have minus one. So this way we have a very modular gallery now, which is easy to use. And that was the goal for this little exercise for this video. I hope you found it interesting. As I said, this is just the very basics of what you can do with custom components. If you found this now interesting, just look into the standard, what's possible, how you can use it, especially also the shadow root or shadow DOM. And yeah, if you like the video, don't forget, leave a thumbs up and see you in the next one. Bye.